Welcome to Management Series by Oluwole Dada. I'll be talking with you seven days, which I have called a model. I've been sharing this for years, um, even at home with my children. They can read some of these seven days and it will be of interest to you. So I am trying to open you up to understand the reality of the challenging moments that individuals, organizations, countries are going through. How do we navigate as individuals, as organizations? So seven days to overcome change and challenges. The first D is desire. What do I call it? Desire. How many of you are Yoruba there? <laughs> so I have a way of explaining it. What do you desire? <laughs> Hello. <Hi. laughs> what do you desire? <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Say to yourself, what do I desire? I'm sure if you don't remember anything, you will remember that one. <laughs> Many of you have no desire. You are goalless. Living without a goal is living like a goat. You know, gods have no goals. They just move around. Move around. Living without a goal is living like a goat. Can you say that after me? Living without a goal is living like a goat. I know you remember that one again. Yes, sir. What are your goals? What are your intents? and purpose. Something happened in my family between my wife and I some years back. She was going through my personal documents at home and she saw some goals I wrote years before she met me. She said, darling, I respect you more. This is speaking before you and talking to you is not something that just came. They are goals written. I have been studying about public speaking for over 20 years. So there won't be a way I will speak before you and you won't enjoy my session. I still read books on how to improve my speaking ability. Goals. Individuals, organizations, nations. I don't know if Nigeria has goals, and I'm not trying to run down our great country. I love Nigeria so well. Do you have goals? Not only should you have them, you must document them. Not only should you have goals, you must document them. What are your individual plans as you go into 2023? What is the organizational plan as you go into 2023? You know, for clarity, 
When I said I'm not sure that you are good, we've had several plans. Vision, Abaja started Vision 20. 20. Oh man. But as long as any new government comes, they throw it away. They start again. Nobody does goals that way. It must remain, it must be consistent. Your intent, your purpose. What do you want to achieve? What do you want to become? Your yearly objective, your monthly objective, your daily goals. How many of you write notes for what you want to do on a daily basis? I challenge you today. If you have not been doing that, let today be a turning point. Wake up in the morning, after your prayers, review your goals which you supposed to have written the previous night. So, as Saturday is coming to an end, you are writing your goals for Sunday. As December is coming to an end, you are writing your goals for January. As 2022 is coming to an end, you are writing your goals for 2023. What do you desire? So the first D is what? Is what? Desire. The second D is drive. Your passion. Your energy. Desire to dry up when drives empty. Desire to do what? Dry they do what? Dry when drives is empty. And passion can be felt. Can they see in the organization that you are passionate about what you do? That's what determines your sustainability. That's what determines your relevance. Passion. Some years back, while working with one of the consumer goods, so I, I, I was serving in Ibadan at that time, and I came to Lagos to service my vehicle. And I started feeling fever. So I went to the company clinic. I said, I don't want drugs because it may take time for drugs to work. I want injection. He said, have I eaten? I said, no. They gave me a bottle of coke. So I took it. As they gave me that injection, I collapsed. And the next thing I saw was I was on the bed. They had to rush, drink, and put drip on me. After I woke up, I said to the doctor, I said, how soon will this drip take? Because I must get to order today. He said, they don't rush him. I said, can you please rush this one? That day finished that day. I landed in order that day. Of course, I collapsed some days afterwards. But passion is evident in what you do. Drive. The drive to achieve, the drive to succeed, the drive to ensure that you surpass your previous achievements. Everywhere I've walked, I've always left with landmark achievements. And I mean landmark achievements. I can document and mention to you 
in precise forms. Drive. When desire is strong enough, it will penetrate every obstacle. So as you move into the coming years with numerous challenges, your drive is what will sustain you. Drive is what keeps you going despite daunting challenges. Your passion to succeed, your passion to achieve. I'm trying to share these stories with you to drive home my point. And please forgive me if they sound like arrogance. I was posted from Lagos to the southwest of Nigeria some time ago on behalf of one of the companies I work with. And in a place that was selling 400 bags a month, I sold 6,000 bags my first month. I landed that product in 70 towns and cities in the southwest within six months. There was hardly any market day in the southwest that I will not tell you that a Rakuji or Show State, this is their market day. Okitibuba in Ondo State, this is their market day. Akukwedo in um, um, the Edo area, this is their market day. Imekwafo in Ondo State, this is their market day. Iji Rogo in the good state, this is their market day. I transverse the southwest. Drive. Drive is what determines if you will remain relevant in the moment of challenges or you will survive. The third D. Diligence. There is no substitute for hard work except the hard life. If you are not working hard, expect the hard life. Nobody gets to the top without working hard. Luck is attracted by hard work. Yes, I know life has elements of luck. But that luck, the door of luck can only be opened with your hard work. Hard work doesn't pronounce hard labor. What is, I, I call one punishment. Task. But hard work is a prerequisite for success. Opportunities are created through hard work. If you are not ready for hard work, forget the talk. And when your colleagues are flying, you will be complaining. Uh, it's close to the boss. Uh, he goes to see the boss at home. You will be finding excuses for their success. Hard work. Hard work. You can't get out of life much more than you are ready to put into it. Life is about seed time and harvest. You can't get out of life more than you are ready to put into it. Life is about seed time and harvest. A man will always reap whatever he sows. So that so hard work will reap success. D number four. Dedication. Dedication is your total commitment to a task. Now, I 
said this for individuals, for organizations, and for nations. One of the problems of a dear country Nigeria is everybody wants to get something without giving. The rise of Yahoo Yahoo boys and Yahoo Yahoo plus is as a result of everyone wanting to break that rule of seed time and harvest. People are not ready to put any work. They just want money. Find out. The same people who complain about the country and they move out. The work they are not ready to do here, they will do it there. So all the things I'm telling you are relevant to individuals, organizations, and nations. Looking about the world drive, how passionate are the collective citizens for the good of the country? While very few wanted to do well, a large percentage are pulling it down. Dedication, putting in all you have towards your cause. Tenacity, a burning desire to get things done. Don't get next and not quitting. Singleness of purpose. Dedication to your cause. Now, this is very important. G number five. Decision. What do I call it? Decision. You are here today because of the decisions you made yesterday. And you'll be where you'll be tomorrow because of the decisions you made today. One wrong decision can wreck a whole destiny. One wrong decision can wreck a whole country. Your decisions determine your tomorrow. You know, people have taken steps to quit their jobs and it ended up a wrong decision. Decisions. Decisions of where you will work, decisions of who you marry, decision of the country you are going to stay. People have decided to leave this country and are regretting it. It is also a decision. If you are destined to go out and stay, it could also be a wrong decision. But be so sure that you have taken a decision as it relates to you, as it relates to your organization, and as it relates to the peculiarity of your country. Recall we mentioned when we were discussing VUCA that you must treat events on a case-by-case -case basis. Your decision about your competitors your decisions about your consumers. I would like to share this, even if it's also in the public, but it's a lesson. They have learned their lesson, so uh, let's, learn, let's learn from their story. In 2015, a challenge came for the carbonated soft drink industry which before then Coca-Cola and PepsiCo dominated in Nigeria. So a particular beverage called Big Cola came into the country. And so they started selling 60 CL for 99. Well the big boys that Coke and Pepsi we are selling their 
35 cm for 100 naira. Pepsi responded, and that was when you have the advert of Long Throat that Tiwa Savage and um, what's the name of the other that Wasted did adverts for them and they called Long Throat. So they responded by sending 50 naira, I mean 50 CL for 100 naira. Follow the story. This computer came in with 60 CL for 90 naira. Coke was doing big boy and uh, decided to start a 33 CL selling that for 100 naira and decided to be selling their 50, 60 CL for 150 naira. Am I correct? Yeah. If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm getting it wrong, I mean, I could be wrong, so you can correct me. They took their own price of their big bottle, 60 CL, remember, 60 CL, to 150. And we're selling a small bottle for 100 naira. Meanwhile, computer is coming in with 60 CL for 90 naira. In 2016, another computer came in, Big Cola. Big Cola is actually a Peruvian company. Big Cola is a local company in Augusta, Nigeria. They started selling 60 CL for 100 naira. Coke was still doing Big Boy and maintained their stand. You know, I'm talking about decision about your computer. So I'm speaking to you as an organization. Decisions about responding to competitors' activities and consumer behavior. And many of the problems that multinational companies have is that because something worked in Europe, they think it will work in Nigeria. Forgetting that consumers in Europe are different from consumers in Nigeria. You must study consumer behavior to get the best out of your consumers. In 2018, another computer came in, RC Cola from America, the blue, the one with the blue brand. Who kept on doing big boy all through this period? And they were losing market share every year. In fact, they sacked a lot of their staff members in 2018 as a result of the losses. It was in 2019 of quarter four that they gave themselves sex <laughs> and brought back the price from 150 to 100 naira and decided to reduce the volume from 60 cm to 50 cm. That was when they started getting back their mileage. A decision not to respond to competitors led to a lot of loss of market share. So your decisions can help you or can help you. I just got some information some days ago that Ibom here, one of the leading airlines in Nigeria, by virtue of their customer service and their um, service generally, uh, they became the preferred in the industry. So they decided to be taking their price very high. Well, 
That's why at homes, when you get premium service, you have premium payment. But the number of airlines are beginning to increase. And I just got some information two days ago that they are reducing their fears now. If they don't do that, they may become airline of yesteryear. So your response, your ability to respond quickly to competitors and your consumers determine if you will survive the coming challenges. The difference between a lot of people on different sides of the divide, and when I say different sides of the divide, I talk about success and failure, is the decision that they make. The decision to have a desire, the decision to have drive, the decision to be dedicated. In these days of uncertainty and volatility, your decision is one of your greatest assets. T number six, desperation. Your audacity, your boldness, your feeling of being in a bad situation that you are ready to take any risk to change it. In one of my journeys as a regional manager in the southwest part of the country, at the time the organization said they were cutting costs. And therefore, um, your traveling expenses are not going to be taken care of, and you are not allowed to stay outside the station for certain reasons. And I was desperate for results. So I will leave about six years, heading for building in a new state. I will get there at 10 years. Work with my distributors, work with my markets women, get to the markets to see how things are going, start my journey back to about by two, I get back to about by six. Desperation for results will make you do anything within the ambits of ethics. So it's not just doing anything. Doing anything within the ambit of ethics to get results. Desperation for results. Desperation for success. Desperation to make progress. Desperation to go forward. Those actions that you take when you are between life and death. Those are the things that will help you in moments of challenges. Desperation will open doors that complacency has kept short. You can practice this seven key, and I mean practice it religiously and not survive any challenge. Desperation for knowledge. I just came back from a trip outside the country, and one of my colleagues in the office saw a book with me. He said, ah, Okay, oh yeah, I thought you went on the journey. It's books that you are buying. I said, yes. I said, that is what increases my value. Desperation for knowledge. Desperation for knowledge. Can I hear you say that? Desperation for knowledge. Desperation for knowledge. Please say it one more time. Desperation for knowledge. And say it as loud as you can. Desperation for knowledge. Recall to mention the knowledge of yesterday cannot help you in solving today's problems. You need to be freshly equipped, freshly equipped for knowledge to achieve outstanding results. 
the last one there, explanation for results. I've said that again and again. And the last D, discoveries. What do I call it? Discoveries. Discoveries make you relevant. What are the new things you have discovered this month? What are the new things you have discovered this year? If you are not studying books, you can't make discoveries. If you are not a good observer, you can't make discoveries. You need to discover new things. Knowing new things is what keeps you afloat in this age of volatility. Your understanding of a matter is a function of your knowledge on the subject matter. So when you say something is complex, it's because you have not yet understood it. So you need to make discovery to unravel its complexity, to demystify its complexity. It is discoveries that can help you demystify any complex matter. You need to be on a new level to solve a problem on a previous level. So about Esme said, you can never solve a problem on the level on which it was created. So if you have a problem on level one, you cannot solve that problem remaining on level one. You need to go to level two to enable you to look back and solve problem of level one. Discoveries leads to creativity. What you know yesterday cannot be used to solve today's problems. Be an ardent lover of books. Be an ardent lover of books. You can make a commitment to buy a book every month. Maximum. 5,000 error. Maximum. Maximum. So there are books of 2,000 error. Buy books on your area of expertise. The areas where you desire to discover new things. The area where you want to get better. An added lover of books. You can't make new discoveries if you don't like books. Every problem remains complex until you discover the solution in a book. Whatsoever crisis you have, there's a solution somewhere in a book. The mystery about reading books is that in a whole book of 300 pages, what may strike you may not be on one page. But that one page can lighten your destiny. Learn new things and new ways of doing things. Learn new things and new ways of doing things. Learn new things and new ways of doing things. Learn new things and new ways of doing things. Learn new things and new ways of doing things. As an individual, as a corporate organization, or as a nation, your rate of change internally must be greater than your rate of change externally. Thank you for listening. Kindly subscribe, like, and share on our YouTube channel, Oluwole Dada. See you in the next series.